Just wanted to do a quick video and show everyone this queen ant that I just found out in my garage. Now this time of year in Arizona, queen ants are on their nuptial flight. They usually do this in the fall and spring months after it rains, depending on humidity and uh, different conditions. Now this queen ant here still have her, has her wings on, which means that she's mated. Um, and right now she's looking for a place to lay her eggs. So what she'll do is she'll actually mate and uh, fill herself up with as much sperm as possible from as many ants as possible. They mate in the air and uh, that sperm is to last her her whole life uh, so she can lay as many eggs as possible. So what she'll do is she'll actually burrow down into the ground. She'll rip those wings off and she'll proceed to lay eggs. Now some ants are semi-claustral and some ants are claustral which means that uh, some of them actually have to go out and they have to still scavenge and look for food. Other ants actually um, fast and uh, they feed their babies from a secretion that they let off. Um, so what we'll do is uh, we'll try to build her a, a nest um, out of Plaster Paris or something like that and uh, see if we can start an ant colony with her. So stay tuned. I'll show you how to build a really nice ant nest from Plaster Paris and uh, show you how to start your own colony. Okay, so now that we have captured our queen during her nuptial flight, I took and just threw her in a jar for right now with a cotton ball so that way uh, she's got some water, cotton ball saturated with some water. Um, so what she does in the, in the wild is she burrows down inside the ground, inside of a hole, it's called a colostral cell. And she rips off her wings and she proceeds to lay her eggs. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a colostral cell for her to lay her eggs and start her colony. So the best thing that I've found to use are test tubes. Uh, glass ones work better than the plastic ones because the glass ones don't hold bacteria uh, like the plastic ones do, but these, these will work. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some purified water and we're going to pour it. Well, I got a little too much, man. Let's pour some out. I'm going to put it about halfway, maybe a little farther. This is about three quarters of the way up. Take a cotton ball. In this case, I'm using a cotton round. I'm going to shove it down in here. Let it soak up that water. Okay. Now, this will act as a buffer uh, so it don't drown her out. But yet, it will soak up that water and allow her to have something to drink. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to take our queen here without setting her free. And, uh, oh look, she's already ripped her wings off. Got this beautiful queen here. So we're going to just put her inside the test tube. <laughs> Maybe not so easy, huh? There you go. And then we're going to put another cotton ball on top here. And not so tight that she can't breathe. That's how you make a colostral cell. And she'll need to sit in there for probably about eight weeks. Uh, she'll start laying her eggs in a couple days after she feels comfortable. Put her in a dark spot and just forget about her. And don't stress her out. Here's one that uh, I started a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't know if you can see, but she does have a few eggs down inside of there. That she's tending to but you got to be careful because if you stress them out she will eat her eggs or they just won't lay eggs but uh soon after we have a colony going we'll make a <coughs> fornicarium which is basically a scientific way of saying ant farm we'll build a formicarium out of some plaster and uh, get an ant colony started so that's how you create an ant colony, or at least create a claustral, claustral cell to uh, house a queen. Thanks for watching. I don't know 
know if you could see, but there's the queen's wings right there. There's one of them anyway. I'm not sure where the other one's at in the jar.